Let's go! TJ Finley, Max Johnson, or will Miles Brennan make a miraculous comeback? It's not only who's going to start, but who should start. Give me your answer in the comment section below. It's kind of tough to say. I think if Miles Brennan was healthy and able to go, I think a lot of you would agree Miles Brennan should be the starter. But according to Ed Orgeron, that doesn't look likely right now. We're in a very wild situation here because a true freshman quarterback for LSU is more than likely going to start versus Alabama or put Terrace Marshall at quarterback. Heck, what could happen? Run the triple option. Tommy Frazier days. Let's go. Honestly, it's not the craziest idea. You're a huge underdog. Alabama looks to be the best team in the country. They're not going to expect it at all. And if you have some success, time will continue to run. It'll shorten the game and make it easier on your defense. But that's just me spitballing. That's not going to happen. It's probably not a good strategy. But anyway, and of course, subscribe. Look, we are so close to the 1.5K. So what are you doing? You got to subscribe and you have to ring the bell to be qualified to win that Patrick Queen card. And then at 2000, I've been hyping them up. An autographed LSU legend card. We're going to give it away. Let's go. And by the way, we will be doing a live stream on Saturday. More on that at the end of the video. TJ Finley, Max Johnson, who's better? You know, you can make an argument for both. Let's start with Max Johnson. The biggest benefit of starting Max has nothing to do with his ability, but more to do with the mental aspect of it. I don't care who you are. If you're 18 years old and you had a disastrous start against Auburn where you had two game-changing turnovers, that's going to leave a mental scar. And honestly, not all of that was TJ Finley's fault. We had the full Auburn film study earlier this week. I'll put a link in this little gray thing, or you can find it in the description below. I show you why the scoop and score wasn't necessarily TJ Finley's fault. Max Johnson, for the most part, has been good in garbage time duty for LSU. Against South Carolina, didn't really get to throw the football that much. But against Auburn, LSU moved the football. And of course, he had the long touchdown pass to Kayshawn Booty. Also a huge benefit with starting Max Johnson is he's mobile. He is a better runner than TJ Finley, and he's also a little bit faster. Some would argue, going up against a really good, can we call them really good? Yeah, they're getting better. An Alabama defense that has a ton of speed, maybe starting a mobile quarterback gives them something a little bit more to worry about. Now, of course, arm strength, TJ Finley has it, but Max Johnson does have plenty of arm strength to make defenses worry. But if I had to start one, I would lean with TJ Finley. Yes, like I said, the mental scar of playing such a bad game against Auburn sticks with you. But how bad was the game against Auburn? In fact, it wasn't all that bad. So TJ Finley had three total turnovers. Let's actually examine those turnovers. His first interception was actually the right decision. He was throwing to an open Terrace Marshall who was running an out route and he just overthrew him. The second turnover against Auburn was all TJ Finley's fault. Auburn got good pass rush. They were in clear man coverage. The right move was to throw the football to John Emery Jr. in the flat, but and also, he didn't step up in the pocket to make it easier on his offensive line. And then he held the football over his head, which you should never do as a quarterback because it makes it easier to bat the football out. So that was entirely on TJ Finley. It's a freshman mistake. It's a normal freshman error. But, you know, you can live with it. And it would have been made easier if John Henry Jr. actually tackled the guy before he scooped and scored. And the reason why missing that tackle was so important is because T.J. Finley then had to go right back out on the field, and LSU was, at least they didn't turn the football over this time, but they were quickly disposed of, and Auburn then went back and scored 
another touchdown. So, you know, T.J. Finley wasn't given any favors. You know, LSU's best player, Terrace Marshall, dropped a pass early in the game. So, uh, overall, when you actually look, though, he, he was moving the football. He just didn't finish any drives. He just didn't get any 50-50 calls. He should have had a roughing the passer penalty on his opening drive. But I saw enough promise from him to say that the start wasn't a total disaster. And oh yeah, by the way, the final turnover was pure luck. He in fact looked to his left, moved to his right, threw the football to the right side, and a defensive line batted it up in the air. More often than not, the ball goes straight down. In this case, it went straight up and it was an interception. That's just an unlucky bounce. So of his three turnovers, really only one was horrible quarterback play. Also, a big reason why his South Carolina start was so good is because LSU had a bye week the week before because the Florida game was postponed. And because TJ Finley had extra time to prepare, that made it a lot easier. LSU, in a very similar situation here, has extra time to prepare. He is, to me, the better quarterback. I think you roll with TJ Finley in this situation. Now, that doesn't mean he's just going to go out there and just crush it. I'm not saying that this is a definitive answer. I think Max Johnson, if given the nod, can also potentially get the job done. Either way, it's a very difficult situation for the LSU starters. When you compare them statistically, yes, it looks bad. TJ Finley, 408 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. That doesn't that doesn't look good at all. But the problem is that these snaps were actually competitive snaps when the game was still in the balance. We've yet to see Max Johnson, outside of one throw against Auburn early in the game, really play in a competitive aspect of the game. So we shall see what happens, but I'm still rolling with the kid from Ponchatoula. So, it's subscriber shout-out. Before we get to that, we will have a live stream on Saturday, 7-ish p.m. Central, maybe a little bit later, maybe just a little bit earlier. So, be on the lookout for that if you have nothing to do on Saturday. It's going to be a little bit more stripped down, like our live stream just from a few weeks ago where there were no games. You know, it was just kind of laid back. We talked about life outside of football. So swing on by if you have time. If not, save all that energy for our live stream next Tuesday night at 7 Central and then after the Alabama game. Our last video was recruiting-based top five LSU recruits. BM7 said the dream class would be Corey Foreman, Mason Smith, Bryce Foster, and Tristan Lee to finish out the class of 2021. So there are four more slots left, but this is where it's interesting. And I like it when you guys push boundaries. I really do. What about Kamar Wheaton and LJ Johnson? Very interesting. So Kamar Wheaton, the number one running back in this class, five-star. Obviously, LSU's been in contact with Wheaton. But the truth is, LSU does already have a running back commit in Corey Kiner. They're very high on him. Heck, he scored seven touchdowns in a game earlier this year. So this was Kev Falk's first commit to the class. Not as most important, his work with Sage Ryan and getting him to LSU was obviously huge for this class. LJ Johnson's a little bit more interesting. He has family ties, I believe, to LSU, so... Maybe LSU should get another running back in this class. You know, we were all so high on Chris Curry and Ty Davis Price and John Emery Jr., and all three of them very well could end up being really good players. But as of right now, none of those three have just, you know, lit the world on fire. Yes, you have Trey Bradford. Yes, the transfer window's always open. But maybe LSU rethinks things and decides to start recruiting one of those running backs even harder. And Amarni Goodwin is still out there. So, and I know he's committed already, but LSU's been in contact. So we'll see what happens. Our resident, resident, our resident firefighter war hug, always bringing the positive vibes. Um, 
he really likes Brian Thomas Jr. I mean, who doesn't? He's fantastic. He's an hour away from campus, but I get what he's saying. So Brian Thomas Jr. for our top five 2021 targets was number five on the list. So a lot of you viewed it as me not making him a top priority when that is not the case. He is still a top priority. He's six foot four. Some people call him the next Terrace Marshall Jr. And obviously, if you have the opportunity to get a Terrace Marshall Jr., you get a Terrace Marshall Jr. But it is no longer a huge position of need in this class. You have four wide receivers committed already in this class. Also, the emergence of Jeray Jenkins is very interesting. I think he's big time. I love what I see from him. And I think he's only going to get better. And then, of course, you have the two, the two true freshmen from this last class, Coy Moore and Kayshawn Booty. They have played a lot, and they're getting very valuable snaps. Shout out to my guy, Vernon. He runs an Auburn YouTube channel, and he's provided some pretty good comments on our channel from an outsider's perspective. LSU has an interesting, brutal stretch to end the season with the chance of being projected underdogs in all games left, which is true. I know it's far-fetched, but let's continue. However, Ole Miss and Arkansas on paper look to be the most winnable games left. So, if, obviously, LSU wins those two games, that gets them to 4-6 and six on the year. So, obviously, there's so much to be said about the injuries with LSU? Does Miles Brennan eventually come back? There's so many unknowns there. But I would agree that those are the two most winnable games. Now, we're not going to get into an Alabama preview piece until, obviously, next Friday before the game. Slander, back to recruiting here with Slander. Slander pop. We need to recruit more offensive linemen. I feel the struggles with sacks and run starts with the line. Our depth is not great now. So the Auburn game was the first Cam Wire game where he struggled. And he went up against Big Cat Bryant, who's going to play in the NFL. So when you factor in that his first two starts came against South Carolina and then also came against Vanderbilt, this was his first tough game. This is a huge game coming up for him personally. Dare Rosenthal looks as if he's letting the team down. LSU obviously would like to have him back, but I don't know what's going on there. So they desperately need to see what Cam Wire really has in the tank at left tackle. And then you got to ask the question, what about Marcus Dummerville? Is he going to get any snaps this year at left tackle in a meaningful game? I don't know, but the point remains the same. I, I do agree with Slander. We need to recruit more offensive linemen. So our top five recruits, are, or should I say our top five targets in our last recruiting video, three of them were offensive linemen. Savian Bird, Bryce Foster, and LSU's biggest target, which is Tristan Lee. Now, some of you commenters don't believe LSU's going to land any of them. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's been mostly positive vibes when it comes to Tristan Lee, but who knows what's going to happen. I will say this. Would you like to see LSU stretch to get some other offensive linemen that aren't necessarily elite like the Lees and the Birds and the Fosters just to get offensive linemen? I don't know if that's necessarily a good strategy, and I say that because... There's always so many offensive linemen in the transfer portal. For instance, a guy like Liam Shanahan or Damian Lewis. Those are two bona fide, consistent starters that you didn't develop or recruit in a class. They were transfers and they were immediately ready to play. So I don't know. I don't know what the best option is, but I also believe that just recruiting off its alignment just to recruit off its alignment isn't necessarily a winning strategy. But I'll tell you this, phew, LSU might be getting another safety. Derek Davis Jr. is a very interesting 
prospect because LSU was recruiting the daylights out of him because, well, the Sage Ryan thing was up in the air. So that would be one heck of a steal right there. That shores up your safety position for the next five years because you had two top 100 safeties already committed for the class of 2022. And honestly, if there was a position right now that I would just be killing in recruiting, it's safety. And the reason why is because I think a lot of safeties over the next five years will be converted to linebacker. I believe a guy like Kari G could play linebacker. Same thing for Matthew Langua. You get better athletes that could play in space. So, I mean, I I don't think LSU's done here. I think they can easily get a Derek Davis Jr. And they could finish this class with the number one and number two safety for the class of 2021. Boom! Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I think this will be our last video before the Saturday night live stream. Boom! Let's do it! Bob, 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 our, our, LSU! <sighs> what are we eating tonight? I think I still have some of my mom's gumbo left, but I'm not sure. I mean, I, I've had it a lot this week, so I might mix it up. I don't know.